Well, getting your debt under control for the new year, many people have made that resolution, and that's why we've invited Brendan Jenks of Wealth Renovators to give us some tips on how to get back in the black for 20, uh, 2012, that is. I know it's something I want to do, and so many people want to do, especially because you and I were just saying a lot of people don't even know how much they spend on any given month. Uh, so if someone quickly, they come to you and they say, I got to clean things up. I'm a mess. Yeah. Um, what would be your first recommendation? What's the first thing they should do? Well, in my observation, we become better investors and me individually and my clients are better investors and can achieve really financial freedom and independence when they have a predetermined lifestyle decision. And so you really have to look at your spending in what we say are five areas of income. And that would be giving, your living expenses, debt reduction, um, taxes, and cash flow margins. So you have to look at those areas. You know, take a, take a look back at 30 days to start with. Yeah, so just kind of for January, say, kind of look at what you spend, what your outgoing expenses are, and you'll get a rough idea. Yeah. Okay, so once you do that and you still figure out, wow, I've got a lot of work to do, what's next? Yeah, the next step would be, to first eliminate the debt, start with the lowest balance first. That's gonna give you the psychological momentum you need to move forward. I encourage my clients too to think about what would it be like if you didn't have a house payment or a car payment. And now you can put that money towards things like charitable giving. That's also gonna help, you know, help your tax situation. What is sort of the number one mistake you see people making who are trying to get back on track? I would say looking at other people's lifestyle. So you can never keep up with the Joneses. So, but I want to. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? So that's why it's so important to just, especially with a spouse, to have the, the sit down with your spouse and to agree what is our lifestyle going to be and you know, have a big goal, you know, have a house paid off so you can give more. And I've talked to a lot of um, advisors about just making sure that you don't have these big expectations for yourself, kind of starting off small. So if you fail, you don't feel like you failed the whole picture. Um, nice. Do you talk a lot about or do you recommend really kind of taking baby steps? Yeah, and that's why starting with the lowest debt first will help because it gives you that psychological momentum that, hey, we're succeeding here. You're watching things get to zero balances. And again, really having a big goal, a big dream is gonna take you back to why are we actually doing this? And one other thing, I know a lot of us, we have our little indulgences, say coffee, we spend you know $5 on a coffee three times a week. I mean, should people really be looking at those and maybe trying to scale back a little? Because when you look in the long run, I mean, that could be $1,000 a year in coffee. <laughs> and that, of course, is the lifestyle decision you're speaking to my heart, love the coffee thing call it a spending decision, right? So create a spending plan within your lifestyle that you've agreed upon so you don't feel bad by going out and spending $5 on a coffee. Hey, if you got it in the budget or the spending plan, you're totally fine. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I will take your advice and I'll let you know if it works.